We saw this earlier. This is a nicer clip. What I want you to notice here is the motion of the bow. Yes, it's distended. Yes, it's abnormal. But look at that epigenic material just kind of sliding back and forth without any real peristalsis. You know, this is that absence of peristalsis we talked about earlier, that back and forth motion. Um, and this is a sign of small bowel obstruction. Likewise, in this next clip, what I want you to make out is the complete lack of compressibility. You can see right there in the beginning of the clip, the operator's compressing the abdomen, the soft tissues around compress easily. These loops of bowel are not, not normal. Normal bowel is easily compressible. This does not compress. One more clip here, and this one's a subtle one, but an important one. Uh, so obviously abnormal bowel yet again, fluid fill distended. You can see that there's thickening of the wall, a bunch of echogenic material in there. But look at this bright, kind of sparkling, highly epigenic stuff, not just in the lumen, but look at it in the wall there as they sweep through in this clip. What is that? Well, it's air. I'm going to tell you that it's air. This is pneumatosis. Um, here's a still shot with a little bit better look. You can see these helpful arrows pointing to these hyperechoic areas in the bowel wall. This is what air looks like. This is a bad sign. I like to think of it as diamonds in the rough, a sign I just dubbed here now, because you know what, I, I think it's catchy. So, you know, kind of a parting shot here. Now what do you see? I think you make out distended loops. I think you make out, obviously, thickened the wall. You definitely see that fluid. What do you see? I think now you can see this is obviously a small bowel obstruction. So uh, take home points. For bedside ultrasound for small bowel obstruction, you want to get the curvilinear probe for most patients and you're just going to mow the lawn. When you're doing that, you're going to be looking for dilated loops. You're going to be looking for a thickened wall. Anywhere you're seeing those findings, test compressibility and look at the peristalsis. These will aid your diagnosis. These will support your diagnosis. And things to keep an eye out for that have perhaps prognostic value for your patients, free fluid, bad. Pneumatosis, worse. Someone with pneumatosis needs a surgeon now. Remember that this is a good test. When you're doing this, you're performing a test with sensitivity and specificity that even if those ultrasound studies are a little generous, I'd argue is solidly in the 80s. And please, please, just, just throw out your x-ray. Forget the order even exists.